Let's start with George Harrison absolutely slating the music of Elton John. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. If you learn anything new in this video, please do subscribe to the channel. Now, while Harrison may well have respected Elton John as a person, this was not the case with his music. And a little disclaimer, these are the opinions of George Harrison on the music of these artists. I'm not saying he disliked them as people, although he may have as well, who knows. He told India Today in 1976, Well, Elton John's music is something I've never thought much of. It all sounds the same. Though I think he's written a good song once, many years ago of course, his music is made to a formula. Throw in lyrics, throw in four chords, shake well, and there it is. The new Elton John super hit. I mean, that's pretty brutal, right? And to be honest, the brutalness only continues with the other artists on this list. And I guess at this point, George Harrison was probably fed up of that title he had from the Beatles of The Quiet Beatle, so was making a point not to hold back his punches. And to be honest, at that point, I think he did deserve to have his opinion on music more highly regarded. He was the first Beatle, after all, to score a number one in the UK and the USA with My Sweet Lord. And the album All Things Must Pass was brilliant. It kind of proved that he didn't need the Beatles to be a good songwriter. Now, when he was talking about Elton John's music, this was in the peak of Harrison's dedication to meditation and his love for Indian music. And in that same interview, he explained that the mainstream offerings of the 70s weren't really resonating with him. He did, however, say who he did like in that interview as well. There isn't too much going on that I seem to like. My favourites are Smokey Robinson and Stevie Wonder. Otherwise, George Benson and, of course, anything Dylan does is worth a listen. Now, let's talk about Neil Young. You might be surprised to learn that Harrison was not a fan of his music. Which is odd because he's pretty much unanimously loved by those in the world of music. But not one to follow the crowd anymore, I guess. Harrison made his point very clear. This is footage of a 1992 studio session. Harrison was providing vocals on Dave Stewart's cover of his own song, This Guitar Can't Keep From Crying. Bob Geldof was also involved, and what you're about to hear is a candid conversation between Geldof and Harrison. Have a listen. Harrison reveals his true feelings on Neil Young. Well, Did you hear Ark Well, George? Pardon? Did you hear Neil Young's um, Ark Weld? It's, oh, it's not on well there. I'm not, I'm not a Neil Young fan, personally. I, 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 I just think his lead playing is just... I hate it. Do you? Yeah, I can't stand it. I mean, he... It's that one string. I mean, it's good for a laugh, but you know, the thing is, he's serious. Yeah. You know, he, he says he's, he says you'd like him. He's a real nice boy. That's the bottom line of it. Is you'll like him. He's nice. But I, I've never liked him musically. Well, I think all these latter day albums, like Russ Never Sleeps, and those sort of records, are really good albums. Well, it was mainly his voice. I liked some of his songs, but I hated the sound of his voice. So do I. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, he is the wrong person. I always thought he seems even worse than me. <laughs> Next, let's talk Oasis. Now, it's no secret that a lot of bands, a lot of artists dislike Oasis. I mean, Tom York, Mick Jagger, the members of Blur, obviously, have made their feelings about Oasis public knowledge. And, as it turns out, George Harrison was among them as well, but specifically taking aim at Liam Gallagher. Now, this must have been a bit of a blow for Gallagher, who counts the Beatles among his top influences. In fact, it's pretty much his entire identity. He even named his son after one of them, Lennon. However, in 1996, Harrison revealed just what he thought of him, suggesting that the band just didn't need him. He's like a bit out of date. You know, I mean, he's a bit of a... It's just, it's just silly. It's silly. I feel a bit sorry for him, really, because I think he's totally missed the bus. And I think it was proven when you see the band without him singing. You know, they're more in tune and they, they can, you know, I mean, he's just excess baggage, I think. And all he does is, you know, make people think what a bunch of prannies they are. Don't worry, though, Liam Gallagher had a well thought out and structured retort. The person, thank you, sir. Nipple. And if they have a meeting, I'll be telling. And if you're watching, nipple. 
Yeah, he called George Harrison a nipple. <laughs> but to be honest, it doesn't seem like Liam Gallagher was too phased by this whole situation. In 2013, at the Royal Albert Hall, Liam paid tribute to Harrison with a cover of My Sweet Lord. Which, well, sounded like Liam Gallagher covering My Sweet Lord. Take that as you will. <laughs> Now before we get on to the next artist on the list, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video or if you learn anything new so far, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. Right, let's talk about The Hollies, just like The Beatles, one of the leading British groups of the 60s. And amazingly, still going to this day. Despite coming from the northwest of England, just like The Beatles, George Harrison wasn't particularly neighbourly towards them. 1965. The Hollies released a cover of Harrison's Beatles composition, If I Needed Someone. In fact, they released it on the same day as Rubber Soul. Speaking to NME in December of that year, he called the cover rubbish. And trust me, it might not sound very powerful, but for an English person to use the word rubbish, I mean, oh, you can't get more savage than that. He went on to say, Their version is not my kind of music. They've spoilt it. The Hollies are all right musically, but the way they do their records, they sound like session men who've just got together in a studio without ever seeing each other before. Technically good, yes, but that's all. These comments sparked a mini feud between the Beatles and the Hollies, or at least the media thought it did. Graham Nash just a week later said he was getting tired of everything the Beatles said being taken as gospel. Hold on a minute, people from Manchester having a feud with people from Liverpool? That's unheard of. Next on the list of artists George wasn't a huge fan of, the Sex Pistols. Now, punk bands hating the Beatles was absolutely nothing new in the 70s. In fact, it was something they were proud of and even boasted about. Glenn Matlock, the Sex Pistols' original bassist, left the band in 1977, later replaced by Sid Vicious. The real reason he left is because the record label told him they'd be interested in releasing his solo stuff if he left the band. There was some tension in the band already anyway, so he did leave. However, the manager of the Sex Pistols at the time, Malcolm McLaren, rushed to the NME and told them that he was kicked out of the band because he loved the Beatles too much. It was all about preserving that punk rock image. Harrison never took it as an insult though because, as it turned out, he didn't like their music either. He told Rolling Stone in 1979, As far as musicianship goes, the punk bands were just rubbish. No finesse in the drumming, just a lot of noise and nothing. I felt very sorry when the Sex Pistols were on television, and one of them was saying, we're educated to go into the factories and work on assembly lines, and that's their future. Everybody wants everything and nobody wants to do anything for it. And he went on to say, the only way you make more money is to work harder, but out of all that is born the punk thing, so it's understandable. But you don't fight negativity with negativity. You have to overpower hatred with love, not more hatred. Which I guess is easy for an incredibly wealthy George Harrison to say. But no bother, let's move on to the final person on this list whose music George Harrison wasn't particularly fond of. And, shock twist, it's Paul McCartney. Now, of course, there was a tension between the Beatles by the end of the 60s. Harrison has said on multiple occasions how hard it was to get McCartney to work with one of his compositions because McCartney would always prioritise songs with Lennon instead. And of course, this tension led to Harrison dramatically walking out of the Beatles in 1969 during the sessions at Twickenham Film Studios. After the Beatles officially broke up though and started releasing their own music, opinions started flying around about the music. The most famous of which was probably between Lennon and McCartney. They got themselves into a pretty heated feud after the Beatles broke up. I actually made a video about this, you can click the I in the corner up there to watch it. Just like Lennon, George Harrison also had some opinions of Paul McCartney's music. In 1979, he told Rolling Stone what he thought about Paul's offerings at the moment. I think it's inoffensive. All the noisy, beaty things I'm not into at all. But then that's not only with Paul's music, that goes right across the board. I'm not a fan of that sort of punky, heavy, tinny stuff. I like a nice melody. And in an interview that took place in the 80s, George Harrison was asked what he thought about Paul McCartney's new versions of old Beatles songs. You see, in 1984, McCartney re-recorded a load of old Beatles and Wings classics. 
They were made for the movie soundtrack and the album Give My Regards to Broad Street. In this interview, Harrison says he didn't even notice they were new, and then has a pretty nasty dig at Paul McCartney's songwriting ability. I think they were okay. I didn't notice that they were new versions. <laughs> I, don't, I only watched it once. I quite liked it, but I don't, I don't really... I remember dancing, all that one about ball and dancing and stuff. I don't remember the old ones. He said that he wanted to tackle some of the other old songs, including possibly some of John Lennon's songs, like uh, Beautiful Boy and Imagine. Does that surprise you that he would do that? Paul? Oh. Yeah. Maybe because he ran out of good ones of his own. <laughs> <laughs> well... Now we've got that on record. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the quiet beetle, not so quiet anymore. Now for another George Harrison story, click over here to find out about the weird love triangle he was in that actually led to some of the greatest love songs ever being recorded. <laughs> 